Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you a few things you can do to make your web browser on your smart TV so much better. Now this particular TV is a Samsung TV but you will find that these features will work on most branded TVs. So even if you've got an LG TV or a Sony or Panasonic you will find that they will all have similar features. Now to use the web browser we just need to go to the Smart Hub and we need to find where it says web browser. Now I've been using it recently so it's under recent. If not, have a look in featured. So press the enter button here and now it will bring up the web browser here. Now with the web browser we can do various different things. You can look up Google and different things that you need to do. It hasn't got flash. That's the major downside with the smart TVs web browsers. They don't have flash. So for example, you can use YouTube on the dedicated app but when you go via the web browser it won't work because it needs flash to be able to watch those videos. There's loads of other things that you can't do as well. For example if I wanted to do a speed test via speedtest.net to see what the internet connection is like then again I can't do that because it needs a flash enabled browser and this isn't flash enabled but for simple things it's still very good. So checking things on Google and Wikipedia and stuff like that. So for example now, using the remote control is kind of hard. So look, if I want to open up another tab, that's fine. I can just go up to this top one here. So I can have two, three, four, five pages open, etc. But let's say now if I wanted to go to Google and type something in. To begin with, it's a bit awkward using the up and down and side arrows but still you can just about manage it. But the biggest downfall is now when you come to type something in. So not only to begin with have you got to get the cursor into that middle bit, which can take a bit of time, then press OK. But what it does is it brings up the keyboard on screen and it's very slow to use. So for example, if I wanted to do latest football results, then see, I go to L and it does prompt me now to do A, which is good. And you can see how long it's going to take for me to write in. So it's fine if you're just doing this every now and then, but this is what puts most people off because it's just too slow. Right, okay, so is there a quick way of doing it? Yes, there is. So let's just return out of that. Discard the text, yes. If you use your Samsung Smart View app, then basically you can use the remote control via your phone. Now this kind of defeats the purpose because if you've got your phone, you might as well use your phone to look up the latest football results. But I'm just showing you this because it might come in handy for other things. So for example now, you can see again, I can just use the up and down arrows and you can hopefully see that the cursor's moving around on screen. And also I can use this trackpad in the middle here, but it's not as accurate as it could be. But still, it does work, sort of but you can still see it's taken me a bit of time now to get it to where I want it to go. But then when it comes to typing in, it's much quicker because I can use my phone and also my phone will auto-correct if I do the wrong word. So for example, if I was to do latest, and let's spell football wrong. There you go, it's already brought it up, the correct spelling, football. And you might think it's not working because nothing's happening on screen. But as soon as we press done, it will transfer to the screen. So watch this now. There we go, and now it's come up and it's brought it up there. So that is a lot quicker, but we've still got the problem where it's not very nice. I mean, it's good, but it's not as good as it could be. So the best thing to do is just to use a separate keyboard and mouse. Now having a, a wired keyboard and mouse, although it does work, is a bit of a pain because you're tethered to the TV by a wire. So just, if you're interested, get yourself one of these. You've got a wireless keyboard here, and I've got my mouse pad here and you can do the same things. So for example, scrolling with two fingers and tapping like that. Same things you do on a laptop, you can do on here. And it comes with a little wireless transmitter. So it's all wireless. This takes a couple of batteries. You just pop them in the back, but the batteries last for ages. And then what we need to do is just plug this into a spare USB port in the back. It doesn't matter which one we use. If you have a look here, I've got a couple of spare USB ports that will work in both of them and I'm just going to plug it into this top one here and just push it all the way in. And that is as simple as that. We haven't got to download anything or do anything with it, it will just start working. And now we just need to turn the keyboard on, like so. And now you can see whenever I move this around, look at the cursor on screen and it's really accurate. We can get it to go exactly where we want it to go. So let's say now if I wanted to open up a new tab, Google, I'm just gonna tap it here. You see it goes through, and let's say if we wanted to look up an old car, Triumph GT6, you can see how much quicker it is. Now when you're using the web browser on the TV, obviously it will depend on your internet connection, 
but it is pretty quick. It's not as quick as using a tablet, your phone, or a PC, but it's still more than usable. So for example, if I go to Wikipedia, you can now see if I use two fingers, I can now scroll down using two fingers. So it makes it so much more usable, but we still can't do things like flash. So let's say now if you want to do a speed test, like I said before, speedtest.net won't work, but what I can do is I can go up to here, and I can go to www.testmynet. So testmy.net, and this is a speed test that doesn't need flash. And if I go to a combined speed test, it's gonna give me a download and an upload test. So now you'll get a true example of your internet connection on your Samsung TV. Right, there we go, you see 40 megabits per second download and 4.2 megabits per second upload. So now you can do your test between wired wireless or do whatever you need to do. Now, another great feature about these Samsung TVs, and it works on a lot of other TVs as well, is picture in picture. So let's say now, if an example is you're watching a football game on your TV, and then you want to look up something about that game or you want to look up another team's score. So, for example, you're watching Arsenal versus Liverpool and you want to see how Watford's doing. Well, let's go back to the TV and I'm going to show you how that works. So, exit this. Now, if you can have a look here, I'm on a particular channel here. Just pretend now that this is a football channel. What we're now going to do is we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to go to the web browser. And now we can either use the remote control, or since I've already got it connected, it's easier for me just to use the keyboard. I'm gonna go up to the menu in the top right-hand side. So if you have a look up here, there's a little menu. I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna left click, and I'm gonna go down to PIP. PIP stands for Picture in Picture. And when I tap that there, you will now see that I've got a small little TV screen in the top right-hand side, yet I can still do all my checking on here, or I can check the Watford scores, for example. So. Go to Google. Right, so if I was to type in Watford FC scores, and then it will tell me the scores of other teams or whatever it is that you're looking up while you're not missing anything on the game up there. Now, if you don't want it in the top right hand side, if you want it somewhere else, because we've got this connected, we can just click and drag. Now, if you haven't got a keyboard, you're gonna to have to go up to here and you have to go to settings and then you have to move the PIP to where you want it. So you can only do it in the corners. Right, bottom right, top left, bottom left. But here, I could just hold it and then I can physically drag it to where I want it to go. So if it was in your way there, you can leave it up there. If you're there, you can leave it down here. Okay, now on here, there's not much you can do. So on the older Samsung TVs, I can't even change channels. So I'm trying to move it up or down now, but I can do mute and volume. Yeah, so you can change the volume and stuff, but there's not a lot else you can do. But I will show you now on another Samsung TV that it will do a little bit more. Okay, so this is another Samsung TV, but this is a 4K TV. Now, if you have a look here, the picture in picture is much bigger. Again, you can click and drag it to any corner that you want. And now I can also, not only can you do the volume like you could do before, but now I can move the channels up and down as well. But there you go, that's a few different things you can do to make the web browser on your TV so much more usable, especially this picture in picture. That is a great little thing that, for example, you can be watching a film and you might want to find out how old an actor is, you can do it while still watching the film. Or if you're watching a tennis tournament and you want to find out who's ranked number one, number two, number three, etc., you can go onto Google and do that while you're still watching the game. And then when you're finished with the picture in picture, you just go up to the menu again, those three little lines, and then you click it and you can just go to PIP off and there you go, it's all gone. To exit it, you can either just exit the web browser by pressing exit or you can go up to the X up here just like you would do on your normal PC. And it asks you there, do you want to confirm it? Do you want to exit it? And just press enter. So there you go, I hope you found that video useful. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care, bye now.